All right. Uh, well, yes, I am Mary Bradfield, and I am uh, the representative for House District 21. Uh, and yes, I am running for re-election. My campaign manager is right here. And um, uh, slave driver that she is, we've been out walking. <laughs> and so, yeah. So, you know, it all works. All right. And I want to thank Matt. Um, Matt asked me to come speak here tonight. Uh, one of the things I did in my past was uh, volunteer a lot for the El Paso County Republican Party. And in that volunteering, I began to realize that uh, those uh, jobs, uh, elected positions, weren't that difficult. And yes, I could do them. And so I ran for secretary, and I ended up being secretary for four years. And uh, <clears throat> then I was tapped to uh, be a vice chair. And I was vice chair for about 18 months, two years. So uh, I, I have a really good understanding of what the structure of a political party at the county level looks like. And that's just what I want to talk about here. Um, When, when we talk about the county party, we are talking about all of the entities that happen in the county in a political sense. We know that there was redistricting this last year, and it changed um, boundary lines of House District and Senate District lines. When we're talking about the county party, when we are talking about the organization of the county party, the one boundary and area that comes out to be really most significant when we're talking about what happens within the party, what happens within the boundaries of a house district are the house district. Because a house district is divided into precincts. Those precincts have been, lines have been shifted. New precincts have been added because each precinct can only be around 2,000 people. And in, in getting the, the configuration, sometimes you have to move a, uh, a boundary line, a block, a half a block, or three quarters of a mile or you have to set up a new precinct. So, you have precincts within the House District and they're probably anywhere from uh, 25, 28 to 45 precincts within the House District. Well, that's a lot. That House District has its own hierarchy of people in responsible. That House District will have a chairman it will have a vice chairman, and it will have a secretary. In that, that chairman and vice and secretary are responsible for whatever's happening in that house district in terms of political activity. It is an autonomous group when it comes to the political landscape. They have basically a charter. They basically have bylaws, uh, but they have no, uh, no authority, you know, civil law-wise or anything like that. It's just within the political party. So, okay, so you have precincts. What happens, how do you get a precinct leader? Well, that's next week's job. And that is an election of precinct leaders, the people who will be in charge of what happens in this little neighborhood. Next week, we will elect precinct leaders, and we will <coughs> uh, elect new precinct leaders, okay? And so that's, that's a really bit. Now, we, if you have four or five precincts that are surrounding each other, usually those get <coughs> bundled together, and it's called a division. Military term, rather and it, there will be a person called a division leader. And it's kind of mental management. 
you've got your chair up here and you've got your precinct leader down here and you've got a uh, man middle management of a division leader who is really responsible for getting the messages down from the chair to the uh, precincts. And that's it. That's really about. But there needs to be a lot of chain of command, a chain of communication. So uh, then there's another type of district we have in the county, and that is Senate district. And those boundary lines don't match anything like the House district, but they'll lay on top. Hmm. It's kind of like putting um, a red lens with a yellow lens on top of it, and uh, the red bleeds through, the yellow over, and you know, it just, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't meet up well. But the people who are in that Senate district are really, <clears throat> you know, they have to, one senator to support. And then the other district we have at the county level is the county commissioner. County commissioner is not a state elected official, but it's part of our, our uh, organization at the county level. And again, the county line, <clears throat> the district line, where commissioners do not match anybody else's lines. It's based on population. Um, and uh, so we have five Senate, uh, um, excuse me, commissioner levels, in, uh, districts in El Paso. So if you want to sound really savvy, and I like you understand what the political hierarchy is. If you want to keep in mind that everything that happens goes through first after the party chair, vice chair, after them, it comes to the house leadership. And then it goes to the division leader and then down to the precinct leader. So if you are savvy and you want to really understand how this all blends together, just remember that if you understand what happens at the house level, that's really all you need to know. Because that's where everything happens. That's where the, the talking all comes down to. So. That brings us to what is grassroots. I've heard it for years. I've heard it since I was a kid. So obviously it's not a new term. But, and I always thought, you know, it, my first thought was grass and reaching under for roots. But it really just means people at the basic level, the entry level for whatever you want to do in terms of politics or or understanding the process. A caucus is where the people of a political party that live within a precinct can meet together to discuss uh, whatever is happening in that precinct, whatever is happening in the county, the state, or even the house district. It, it's that. But it's a short it's a short time span for that meeting, so <clears throat> there isn't a lot of time for chit chat. A caucus is called for three purposes. Believe it or not, there are three. The first purpose and the first thing, <clears throat> order of business, will be <clears throat> to elect new precinct leader or two. If you are fortunate, your precinct will have two leaders. That's two friends or two people that are willing to walk the, the precinct, uh, make phone calls, whatever you need to do. Many of our precincts only have one. One, many of our precincts would like to have one. And there are a few that have two. So, you know, if you're precinct is one that has two, that is something to celebrate, really. 
and, and it is an election, usually people stand up and say, um, I've been a precinct leader, I volunteer, I'd like to do it again. Um, sometimes it's, uh, uh, Rebecca, I'm going to twist your arm and twist your arm until you say <laughs> yes, <laughs> because there is a, you know, there isn't anybody coming forward and things like that. But most usually there is always somebody who says, you know, I think I can handle it. it it's an unpaid job. Um, it is a volunteer completely. I think probably uh, nine months out of the year, you forget about it. There's nothing to do. But when we get into campaign time and campaign season, then yes, that is the time that we ask you to step forward, uh, help the uh, candidate, the House uh, candidate <clears throat> for that area, whether it be walking, making phone calls, um, whatever it takes. You know, in, in my case, it would be lovely to have some of these people uh, help me get ballot uh, signatures, signatures, petition signatures, and things like that. So that's number one of what's going to happen Tuesday night. <clears throat> number two is of all the people who are there, we need to elect delegates and alternates to the various assemblies that we're going to have. The first assembly, is that's the most important one. Everybody needs to be at this one, and that's the county, <coughs> county assembly, <coughs> which will be at Vista Ridge High School, okay, in March 19th, I thought so. Okay, March 19th. Um, and how do you get to be a volunteer? And how do you get, how come your precinct gets to have two delegates and <clears throat> Steve's precinct gets six? It's not about the number of people in that precinct. It's all about the number of people who voted in the last election. Steve's precinct really got out the vote. They had lots and lots of Republicans vote. So that means that they are qualified to have six. Unfortunately, your precinct kind of forgot that there was an election coming on and not so many turned in their ballot. So you have two. It's a consequence thing. And so when we talk about get out the vote, we're really trying to strive for uh, the numbers and not only to get our people elected, but also to know that the, it has a consequence down the road, okay, for another, the next year. <clears throat> so <clears throat> a lot of times to elect delegates, it's just simply, uh, okay, we're going to elect delegates for the county assembly who would like to go, and you, uh, people raise their hand, just like candy, and that's, and <clears throat> if there are more than six, or, or let's say, you have six and more than six people raise their hand, then you have to have an election to um, get the six, you know, for that. Then you probably heard that there are alternates, and like, what the heck are those? Does that have anything to do <clears throat> with an alternator for the car or uh, an alternate universe? Or I, I never understood it for a really long time until I went to a caucus for the first time and then I was elected an alternate. And I thought, okay. So I show up at the county assembly just to be told I get to sit over here, and I can't do anything until they tell me that I can. So what an alternate does is in the election is if one of the delegates are not able to attend, you get to take that person's place, and you are responsible for all the votes for that position. If, they'll, if that happens, if it 
happens that all of your delegates show up for the assembly, well then enjoy your seat because you're just going to watch everything for the whole day, okay? But that's still, that's still fine. You still have uh, participated in some sense because even if you're just watching what's going on, that certainly is a learning experience and you certainly will get to know what, um, what is happening as your, at your county in terms of people. So that's number two. We elect a precinct leader and then we elect delegates and alternates for the county assembly. <sighs> county assembly is not the only assembly we have. We have another two this year, right? Three, three. Two, congressional and judicial. Yep, thank you. She always keeps me straight. <laughs> I do all these things, but she's really the one who has, has a down path. Uh, um, if you're not a delegate or alternate for the county assembly, then uh, you, you won't have an opportunity to be a delegate or, or alternate for the state, the fifth congressional. What is the other one? Um, that's it, those two. Yeah, this, this time, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, so now we've handled number two, sort of, because once you have all the county delegates and alternates for your precinct, then that is the pool you use to get your uh, state and your congressional delegates. You can do all three if you want to, or you can do just one or two. That's up to you. And, and quite frankly, I'll tell you, there is a cost for a s single one of these. And I'll get back to why there is a fee. Not a tax, but a fee uh, for each one of these. <clears throat> so we've elected delegates and alternates for the county assembly. We've elected delegates and alternates for uh, the state assembly and then for the uh, fifth congressional. So we're done with that phase and that's really an important part of the evening and it takes a long time, always. The third thing uh, that we do at a caucus and it's all also the part of the caucus that often falls off. And it falls off because the two hours that we have for caucus are done. We have to clear the building. We ha uh, we're done, you know? <laughs> so, um, and that's the unfortunate part because the third thing is resolutions. What are things that people on your precinct feel are important enough that as a Republican party, we should take a stand on? It might be the Ukraine, it might be some of the more traditional topics, uh, First Amendment, Second Amendment, abortion, um, property rights, water, gun control. Those are often the big, big topics that come in resolutions, but that's fine. Because those are things that the grassroots or you and I John Q. citizens feel are important enough that our party should stand on these ideals. Okay, so in two hours, you've accomplished a lot of things and you have now an, a, a place to be in a couple weeks if you are a delegate or alternate because the first one you will have is the county assembly. Now. I earlier mentioned that, and please understand, I really don't think I'm, I'm floating from topic to topic here. There is a, 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 a pathway that I'm taking, but before I get off of the county assembly and state and everything, and I said that there, there is a fee for each one of these. Um, that is, Jody. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, 
If you take a look at each one of these, they are held in a place on a day that that building needs to have extra service people there. Uh, they need to have probably people there so that microphones can be used, uh, AV equipment is capable, but it's particularly in a school, there needs to be personnel. Uh, public schools are not as generous as they once were, and probably uh, for good reason, they cannot afford to be so generous as to allow uh, 1,500 people come in, use the facilities, and walk out and probably not pick up their trash. So there is an expense that has to be. Many times when you walk in to an assembly, you pick up a packet and there are tons of paper in it. Now, paper's not cheap, copiers are expensive in the ink. And so there's a fee for you know putting that together. Sometimes, sometimes you just know that um, the people who put that together may have been volunteers, but they should have been paid for the work that they did. And sometimes they are. That that depends on on the county. So that when you when somebody starts complaining about a fee for an assembly, I, I would just encourage you to say to them, how much do you think it costs to rent this place? State assembly, world arena. Anybody know how much it costs? The price tag starts at $35,000, starts. That's a lot of money. That's what you can get for rent in my basement as an Airbnb. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So, so I, I just, I'm putting a plug in for, for these, these uh, uh, charges for these various assemblies because they're not cheap, and I do understand why they are there. And uh, so, at the at the county assembly, you have arrived. You've signed, checked in. Uh, you have gotten your, de your delegate badge. Uh, you may want to find your house district people and sit together with them. It's usually not mandatory, but it's kind of nice. And then, you know, things get started. One of the things we might do is we will, uh, obviously, we always, I've got to back up, always let all candidates have an opportunity to speak. That can be a lot of people walking across the stage. We will elect county uh, officials, people to go on the ballot, Republicans to go on the ballot if they are a countywide um, elected position, such as sheriff, treasurer, clerk and recorder, County Assessor, County Coroner, I've missed one. I always you miss. Think about rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and County Surveyor. So those people will, uh, whoever is running in the Republican Party for those positions will have an opportunity to speak. There will be a ballot and uh, they will be voted on at the County Assembly. The um, other thing that will happen is uh, they, everyone will go into their house district and uh, much of this same process is repeated in the house district. They will go into another meeting then the Senate. This process is repeated and then also for the commissioner. This process is com uh, com repeated. Um, it, it takes a while. And what is something, I've left something out of the county assembly. What did I leave out? Yeah, we have to come back to get the vote tally. 
Mm -hmm. You think that's it? I think it is too. So being at the grassroots gives you lots of opportunity to open the, the uh, gateway for you to do these other things, like be going to these assemblies, uh, being a part of the process. And I really encourage everyone next Tuesday night, attend your caucus, even if it's the first time you've ever been there. It's uh, uh, growing, uh, really a learning experience. And um, I told Matt that I would speak 15 minutes, and I think I'm over. Thank you. Sure. Sure. We thank you, Mary.